Night after night, they worked in silence, deep in the desert, 100 kilometers east of Jaisalmer. This group of men faced not just the elements, which is blistering 51 degrees centigrade extreme heat and a freezing minus three degrees cold in the nights, but constant danger from snakes and scorpions. Yet, before dawn, they always restored the desert's untouched facade. And then, a casual game of cricket, as if nothing had happened. The story begins in 1995 with the 58th Indian Army Regiment, who were entrusted with a mission so secretive that even among them, very few people knew the real scope. The complete details of the plan were known only to two men, Major General Prithviraj and Major General Nataraj. Their identities? Fabricated. The orders? Cryptic. But the goal? Monumental. And then came the fateful day, 11th of May 1998. As the desert stood still, a countdown began, ticking down to the moment that would change history. And in a blink of an eye, the calm was shattered and history was made. For in that moment, India had emerged onto the global stage in a way no one could ignore. Hello and welcome to A Century of Storage India, brought to you by IDFC First Bank, always you first. I am your host Kunal Vijaykar and today I bring you the story of India going nuclear, Pokhran 2. In 1962, India faced a crushing defeat in the Sino-Indian War. Two years later, China conducted nuclear tests at Lopnur, a site in northwestern China, adding to the growing concerns for India. And the following year, China openly supported Pakistan in the 1964 war against India. India had marked its entry into the space of nuclear energy in 1974 with the Smiling Buddha mission, also known as Prokhran 1. The operation was named after the small, quiet desert town of Pokhran in Rajasthan, where the nuclear site was located. Now, while these tests were conducted solely for peaceful purposes, the collapse of India's primary nuclear ally, the USSR, along with growing threats from hostile neighbors, had left India in dire need of nuclear technology for its own defense. This required significant research and testing, which India was ready to undertake. However, the five nuclear powers, which is the US, the UK, France, Russia and China, were pressuring other nations like India to sign treaties banning such research. In defiance of these odds, the Indian government made a bold decision in 1995 that India would prepare for a nuclear test. But with international intelligence keeping a close eye on Pokhran, India was forced to abort the mission. But the tide turned when Pakistan launched the Ghori missile in March 1998 with assistance from China. This was significant for India because that missile could reach deep into our territory, posing a direct threat. This need to defend against its growing threat pushed the Indian government to reconsider its nuclear stance. To subvert the international opposition we had faced the last time, it was decided that India would go ahead with a covert operation. The mission was codenamed Operation Shakti and nuclear test preparations began in Pokhran in secret. The trick? United States surveillance could not monitor activities in the dark. All work would be carried out at night and as the dawn breaks, everything would be hidden away, no traces. The level of detail was so minute that even the sand displaced during the digging was realigned with the wind's direction to avoid raising any suspicions. This highly classified mission involved the construction and maintenance of six critical shafts needed for the nuclear tests. It was assigned to the 58th Indian Army Regiment, who was sworn to absolute secrecy. 
Major General Nataraj and Major General Prithviraj were the code names given not to army generals but to Atomic Commission Chairman R. Shidambaram and DRDO Chief APJ Abdul Kalam. But the most ingenious tactic was to conceal the mission by the most mundane sight, soldiers playing cricket. This clever ruse was meant to distract and mislead any onlookers, including satellite surveillance, into believing that nothing unusual was happening. Then, on the 11th of May 1998, the secrecy ended when India carried out three underground nuclear tests, followed by two more on May 13th. India was now a nuclear state. And this is what the Indian Prime Minister said at the time. एक रात का खेल नहीं था हमारे वैज्ञानिकों इंजीनियरों टेक्नीशियनों और हमारे सुरक्षा बलों के वर्षों की तपस्या का यह फल था इस क्षण में इस बात को स्पष्ट करना चाहता हूं कि भारत सदैव शांति का पुजारी था है और रहेगा द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया मेड अ क्लियर डिक्लेरेशन आवर इंटेंशंस वर आर एंड विल ऑलवेज बी पीसफुल but we do not want to cover our action with a veil of needless ambiguity. India is now a nuclear weapon state. Ours will never be weapons of aggression. Operation Shakti triggered a wave of international reactions, ranging from sanctions to sharp criticism. Washington DC swiftly imposed sanctions on New Delhi, while Britain expressed dismay. And Germany called the tests a slap in the face for nations striving for non-proliferation. Yet, in the face of global protests, India stood firm. The Pokhran tests had fundamentally reshaped the world's perception of our country, and this was a defining moment. India had cemented its place on the world stage as a nuclear power. Contrary to fears of isolation and economic collapse under sanctions, something unexpected happened the world began to realize that India was too significant to marginalize. Instead of being pushed into the shadows, India's rise became undeniable. The global community had no choice but to take notice. You were watching A Century of Stories India, brought to you by IDFC First Bank, always you first. Next week, I will be back with another story of India's incredible achievements. In today's edition of Safe Banking Tips from IDFC First Bank, I'll tell you about ATM frauds, also known as skimming. Whenever you use an ATM, beware of any suspected object or device at the ATM machine, especially near the card slot or the keypad. It may be a device to copy your debit or credit card data or capture your PIN. If you also see any suspicious individual lurking around the ATM, do not use your card at that machine and notify the bank. And always complete your transaction before leaving an ATM. I V M